Hi. I don't want people to be Good waiting. Afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, Tuesday afternoon, uh, we are after Memorial Day. So I guess uh, not literally, but kind of, I guess from a, a feel standpoint, we're, we're in summer now, aren't we? Oh, yeah. I, I guess you're right. Can't tell it from where I live, but let me, let me get my jacket on real quick. Is it that cold? It's yeah. like 60. Okay. So, it, yeah, it's a little nippy. I've got my heat on. Everybody has the heat on in the office today. So, yeah. Hey, Bridget. Hey, Linda. So. The light's weird on here today. Like, my dimple is really showing. It doesn't normally. Weird, weird light. 90. Dang, Leslie. Oh, I don't know. I think I'd rather have my 60 than your 90. That's, that's a little bit much for me. It's uh, not too bad here today. Uh, temperature feels like it's in the 70s. Oh, nice. My favorite. You know, uh, 75 to... I actually, anywhere in the 70s, I love it all. 70 to 80. Oh, yeah, it's nice. So we uh, we had a little bit of a glitch today, you guys, when we were trying to set up the Facebook Live. Uh, just get got off because of the holidays, so we ended up scheduling it for ten minutes after. So some people are going to think that we're not even here yet. So we're on a slow start. Yeah, we got a few people. Um, anything? Uh, happening in your world, Liz, that uh, we'd want to talk about? Nothing exciting, I don't think. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Oh. Let's see. We've got this, uh, the May 22nd PPP final, final interim rules. Don't you like that? Those are the final interim rules, but they're not the final because we really don't know what final final is. No, just so the really, they're just the most recent rules. Uh -huh. So we're going to go over those a little bit. I don't know if any of you guys have already gone through all of these. Can you give us a little bit of highlights? But we thought we'd pull them up. And it's awfully small. Can you blow that up a wee bit, Tom? I'll try. Otherwise, y'all are going to have to look up my nostrils because I have to get so close to the screen. Oh, it's looking better already. 26 pages, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess we could download that ourselves if we wanted to read through 26 pages. But we don't want to do Marlo. that. Marlo, she's, she's right on our page. Final. That's funny. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> that is funny. When I said it to Tom, I was like, yeah, we, we should talk about the final uh, PPP rules. He was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so same thing. All right. So I probably, uh, my plan was to pull this and download it and, and read the whole thing. Just haven't made the time for it yet. So, um, Probably doesn't look like anything better. Better defined terms. Payroll costs, interest on work. It looks like same. I guess what I'm wondering is this is really oops. Sorry. Okay. So last Friday night, the SBA gave new weekend plans. And this came out on the 23rd. So this was this was Friday night. Okay. Yeah. But the whole thinking of, you know, uh, the senator from Maine and Rubio and all those guys extending the uh, window for another eight weeks. 
that would blow all this up, right? Well, we had hoped. Did you scroll down? Did you find anything around that? Tips about tips. Keep going. Keep going. But no, it's planning for interest. Keep going. This all is talking about the other 20%. Looks like which timing is everything. Hold on. They're timing. We care about that. You can't pay your interest in that. You can't no, pay a no. year's worth of interest. Yeah, but they're talking about you can be on both ends again. That was weird. Why well, do they keep doing that? Don't know. Maybe it really wants to do that part. All right. I think. I think it's her fault. Ah, oh, Molly, what are you doing? Isn't she getting oh. bigger? Yeah, she is getting bigger. Yeah. But she still looks very puppyish, Tom. Very, very puppyish. She's getting a little yeah. faster, though. We let her out in the yard. I have to work a little harder to keep up with her. <laughs> she's going to have to have a. She's going to have to have a, a leash before long. That's what I'm thinking. Do you, didn't you guys used to have um, an electric fence, right? Yeah, one of the things that went under the ground that the dog had a collar and yeah. it, it, it didn't really work. So uh, we haven't even, uh, I don't know. Right. What we're going we, might, we might fence in the backyard this time. Keep her safe. Uh, okay, enough already about the 75% rule. Okay, yeah, yeah, further addition. It doesn't, I'm not really seeing, like, off the top of my head, a whole lot that's looking different. No, nothing here to uh, get excited yeah. about. Timing and payroll. Oh, that all looks the same. You know, I'm really happy that I took so many speed reading courses right now. So bonuses and hazard pay are legit. Yeah. Which is which is good because people were struggling with the idea of a bonus or hazard pay. So I do like that. And it's the same hundred thousand dollar rule. So yep. that's easy. General partners don't care. Most people aren't going to care about that. Most <laughs> people, bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. Self-employed, <laughs> self-employed individuals are still out of luck. Okay, so who was talking to us about that last time? Bless you again. What if you tried to bring them back, Jack? That's going to be the same thing. Oh, and they made it more liberal. Look at that. See that? Um, I'm going to say for another hundred. During the covered all time, it was the same. Oh, it looks the same. How is that more liberal? It needs to be a written offer. You have to let the unemployment office know that you offered them a job. So that's actually um, harder on them, easier on us. Link, please. Oh, Leslie needs the link. Yeah, we're just sitting here reading. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> I guess you don't want to um, get on this Facebook Live and watch us read 26 yeah, pages. Yeah, that's cool. What? It's so much fun. Okay, let's stop with this, Tom. Yes, and that would be good. Okay. You guys read it on your own. I'm going to read it too later. But um, we're not going to read any more of this, Tom. See, we're terrible. We really want to read it. How about you did have some homework you had to do? Let's talk about alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> not my ties and daiquiris, y'all. Yeah, we had a question that came up Friday. We wanted to know about alcohol as a disinfectant cleaner. And didn't have, felt like 
you know, we had the best answers. So we said, let's do a little bit of research and we'll, we'll give you a, a good answer on Monday. And this is Center of Disease Control, the CDC. CDC is a wealth of information. Um, anytime that you're looking to, to answer questions in the area of, of you know, hygienic cleaning, how to, how, to, how to, you know, prevent disease and stuff like that, I guess we kind of, you know, stand to figure that Center of Disease Control would have information on that, and they do. Um, this overview here is pretty good. They um, basically say that it does a decent job um, as a disinfectant. Um, decent or effective? Alcohols are rapidly bacterial rather than barostatic against uh, bacteria. So what they're telling us is there's a lot of pathogens out there, bacteria specifically, but other pathogens that alcohol will, will, will do a good job of, of killing. But unlike a lot of other um, disinfectants that the uh, EPA will, um, you know, recommend for, you know, various, uh, various pathogens, it really has no residual effect. That's, that's, that's what that uh, bacteriostatic means. It's a lot of disinfectants that if you use them, it'll keep bacteria from growing for a matter of, of, of days or longer, depending upon what disinfectant you're using, what pathogen you're dealing with. Alcohol, not so much. Um, That's good info. It says that if the alcohol gets below 50%, it's not very efficacious. Um, says it doesn't do a good job of destroying bacterial spores, which can be problematic. Um, but, you know, against uh, a variety of microorganisms, the exposure range can take anywhere from 10 seconds to an hour to get a kill rate. So that's kind of the other thing about it. It depends what type of pathogen you're going after as to how long it would take. Couldn't find anything specifically about the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, the one that causes uh, COVID-19. Um, it does say it's a potent virucidal agent. And if you think about it, it's basically when you're using a hand sanitizer, that's what you're, 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 you're using. Yeah. My general takeaway from reading this, though, is if you're, you're looking for a disinfectant to use in your cleaning process, you're probably better served using uh, an approved disinfectant as opposed to doing it with alcohol. In the absence of having a disinfectant, alcohol certainly, you know, better than, than, than nothing. Um, Somewhere down here, they basically explain that if you're in a pinch, you can use it, but alcohols are not recommended for sterilizing medical equipment and a lot of other health care, blah, 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 blah. It's. Okay, good. You can do it, but it's not, not the best deal. Well, while I was there, I saw this that I wanted to share. Last week, we talked about. Um, how the CDC came out with, 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 with some research and it was supported by that, a blog post that, that, that we shared last week as well. That's uh, in the resource page for cleaning business today that a lot of the, the, the spread is through close prolonged contact, human to human droplets, like being, you know, shed and people inhaling them. It led a lot of people to believe that, well, gee, maybe I don't have to worry about washing my hands anymore. And this whole thing about high touch areas and, and cleaning stuff and sanitizing, and disinfecting, maybe isn't that important. And the CDC tried a couple of times to correct that. And they finally, you know, third time's a charm, I guess. And here's a statement. And you guys need to 
hold on to that link. If you hear from a customer or anybody else that, you know, high touch areas really aren't that much of a concern, the CDC basically backed off of that and said that uh, it still is a concern. You need to keep your high touch areas clean. You need to be washing your hands and following all the necessary precautions. Yay. So this, you, is that the link you just threw up there, Tom? It Media is. library? It okay, is. great. Actually, I might, um, I think I'll just add that into my daily mail for the next week or so. That's good. I like it. Uh, they, I think my people, I don't know if they like it or not. Nobody's actually called me and said, hey, Liz, I like these updates that you're doing. But if they, do, if they don't, I'm assuming they do. I keep doing them. Every time I get a new piece of information, I'm like, okay, I'll add that to my daily reminder email. Hey, CDC update. Sure, they know a lot of the stuff already, but I like doing it, so I'm going to continue. Especially if it makes our cleaning service look more valuable. Yeah, exactly. That was the whole reason why I'm doing it. Uh, Marlo uh, gave some information from Megan. Megan mentioned earlier today that she thinks they'll do a final this week, a final final, not a final interim, um, because some of the people, their, their eight weeks are up next week. She also said she heard that they may extend the eight weeks to 16 or 24. I also heard 12. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I guess they're, you know, just looking at all of these different options to see what's going to make the most sense. Uh, did she mention anything about more money? I haven't heard anything from anybody saying that there's more money coming down the pipe. Because if they extend... You know, if they extend from eight weeks to 16 or 24 weeks, and the people who got their money before they changed all the rules aren't going to have any money because they, you know, want to serve it out, et cetera. So I'm wondering if they yeah, give people a little bit more money. I don't know if you heard anything, Marlo, but if you did, let me know. You, wanna, you, yeah, want, the latest, you want the latest, Kenny? Yeah. Okay. This came out at noon today. The House will vote Thursday on legislation that will relax restrictions on companies that borrow money through PPP. Uh, the House Majority Leader uh, tells reporters there's a general consensus that the House and Senate that the time frame was that was set was too short. Boyer says there's not much time to resolve uh, between the House and Senate versions of the bill, says he expects the Senate will pass the House version um, with unanimous, unanimous consent. Um, I think the... Did they say what the House version was? What was the House version? Timeline extension is the implication, meaning that they would uh, give us more time. But we don't know how much yet. Yeah, and I don't uh, belong to uh, BloombergTax.com. Me either. But I, you know what? I do get a, a weekly Bloomberg uh, magazine hard copy. And it may be in there. I find a lot of that stuff is in the magazine. So but it sounds like day after tomorrow, there's going to be uh, they're going to be voting on it, and there's going to be more changes. And it sounds like it's going to be good for us. And it's going to be the thing. Well, gee, if I'd known that before, I'd spent you know I made made some different decisions six weeks ago. But we're still complaining about free money, right? Yeah, I, but I mean, it is kind of a bummer for the people who whose eight weeks end next week. You know, it's kind of a bummer for them because they have already, uh, you know, spent their money in the ways they spent it. But one thing that uh, uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit today, just a tiny bit, is I talked to two people in the last two days that have both said they're not going to spend all of their PPP money. First off, this extension makes it hopefully much more likely that they will spend it but I don't really understand why they why anyone would not spend all their PPP money uh, if 
especially with the new uh, rules that have been written around bonuses and hazard pay, why, why not? What, why, what are the reasons for not spending all the money when you get to the end? I, I mean, actually, right now, for all those people that were saying, hey, I'm not going to spend all of my PPP money, and next week is their last week, and now they have another who knows how long day for them. They'll probably, they will use it all up, but. It, it gets better. I mean, one reason would be if you didn't meet all the criteria to have it all forgiven, I guess, and depending upon how much you have to pay back, if you, you don't, you know, if you didn't spend it, it's going to be easier to pay, give that part back, right? Yeah, but why would you not be able to spend it? I mean, however much you got, uh, well, maybe if. You can spend, yeah, you can definitely spend it, but. No, I meant in, in accordance with the way everything's written so that you could have it forgiven. But I, I just thought of a way that you could. You got to get your headcount numbers right. Yeah, yeah if, you're, if your headcount numbers are right, but some of the people did not come back to work. So, you know, if half your people didn't come back, but you still keep your headcount numbers, but you don't have those people to actually pay, but you that, gotta that have enough, you gotta have enough work to generate revenue off the people that you do have. And Not really. You can you can create work for the people that you do have. If you're not making money off of it, then still forgiven. And still everything the number. We're still here, I'm not sure exactly. These spreadsheets change, you know, every other week or so, and we're still waiting for the final rules. I would, yeah. I would say that I would, I would say that it's not 100% guaranteed that we know exactly how to make sure all of it's going to be forgiven. I'm. I'll give you that. So. They changed too many things too many times that yeah I, I could see that. I had three people not come back and only a third of my clientele. Woo! Oh, you mean a third didn't come back? Okay, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, I think I, I think a lot of people are seeing. Uh, not everybody coming back yet, but uh, I don't know anybody who, and I, I'm sure there are people out there, but I just don't personally know anybody who isn't still having clients coming back. You know, every day getting another couple of clients coming back and that I, chances are, are good that we're going to get, I think, at least my estimation is most people are probably going to get back 90% of their customers. You know, there's going to be that 10% that are like, oh, I've been cleaning all this time. I didn't realize I don't even need cleaning anymore. Or, oh, only a third are back. Well, how long have you been open, Leslie? I'm just curious if a, a third are back. Um, and I guess it does depend if you closed and nobody else in your area closed, you know, those types of things. That That could make a big difference, too. Can you guys imagine what it's like in my head? It just like, just never shuts up in there. <laughs> and in, a, in, the, in the economy, the unemployment rate, you know, there's a lot of other factors other than just the, the, the pandemic itself. There's a lot of economic yeah. stuff going on out there that will have an impact on demand as well. And I guess because of school, yeah. I know down in Texas, they're having some other problems too, right? Oil, oil yeah. problems, causing some grief down there. Blur. Not yeah, really the oil well. rate's not level across the country, depending upon what's going on in your local economy, it might be better or worse than. And which people are affected. In some yeah. areas, it's more the service workers that are being affected in other uh, other areas not so much. it's the people that would be paying the service workers so which i know they're they're dealing with a little bit in texas i'm wondering if that could be what's happening too in uh california where leslie is yeah shannon yeah we're we have uh school teachers that do that a lot though in the summer they'll take off and stay home i don't know is that just a pacific northwest but we do have a lot of that do that stay home and clean for clean themselves during the summer. Do you hear the weird, anybody else hear the weird like 
Charlie Brown feeds out. Future client is just taking the summer off because of me in August. Yeah. No, you're not hearing it, Tom? Well, I, I was nodding my head now, and then it's something like, rah, rah. Yeah, that's <laughs> not hearing. Uh, Rosemary, third week back, we're about 50% of our clients back. I feel like that's pretty good. Only a few cancels. I believe I will have most come back. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty good. That's kind of what we're hearing um, across the board. Uh, um, Leslie, you do too? Yeah, same as me. How about, yeah, they're they're hearing it too. The, it's a little bit better right now, actually. Lots of background noise. I know, I thought it was just me. Tom couldn't hear it. <laughs> Glad you guys could hear it. Yeah, Charlie Brown is strong. <laughs> yeah. uh, how about um, Charleston, Atlanta? Tom, how are, how are the numbers creeping back up? <sighs> We're probably about well, we're over 50% in Charleston and in Greenville and Atlanta. We're probably, we're probably right at 50. Atlanta's a little bit slower, but they open later. We've only been at it a couple of weeks there. So you're about the same two, three weeks, right? Depending on the different branches, two weeks in Atlanta, three in Greenville and Charleston. Yeah. Yeah. No. So Similar, Rosemary, and it sounds like uh, it's it's about the same numbers. Leslie, how long have you been? It sounds like a radio is on. It does sound like a radio is on. I'm right. I'm playing with something here to see if I can get a better outcome. Let me see if this works or no. Already has been sounding better. Like right now, I don't hear the feedback at all. Oh, so I said all, and I heard it. Take one day off and everything just falls apart, Liz. I know. It, I, I, did, did everybody take the day off? I know a lot of people that did not take the day off. So yesterday I had um, uh, I had a one-on-one a -on -one with somebody, uh, just a coaching call, and I thought we were going to be the only ones working. But then my mastermind uh, accountability group, the MMA, the success group, they said, hey, Liz, since you're not going to um, open up the call today, we're going to do a separate call. They were on the call for three hours. <laughs> I was like, oh, what are you guys doing? Don't any of you work? They're like, no, it's a holiday. So on the holiday, you get on the phone for three hours and talk about work. Y'all are crazy. Crazy. Okay, much better. No day off. Deb, same as me. No day off. Bridget, you took the day off or you worked? So a lot of people, I guess, were working yesterday. Our um, We worked here for half a day. So I think I already shared that, that I told everybody if they work their schedule, they get all their, their hours and their points. So everybody worked. Everybody was happy to work. Um, get all their, I all guess their it money. Say working. Was I, yeah, I did some work yesterday, but for most of our, our cleaning operation that was that was a day off for them yeah for people out in the field does this sound better i'll we're let you guys say like yeah maybe a little bit better we're still getting some charlie brown yeah okay yeah who who is the guy with the charlie brown was a peppermint patty no no, you think it was the teacher. The teacher was the one that the one. The teacher. Wow. Yeah, the teacher. Good job. That Rosemary, yes, that it's better or? Wah, wah, wah. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, you're right, Tom. It was the teacher. I haven't seen that in a long time, though. So anything else new? Anybody else not gotten their PPP money? I was talking to somebody today that... Uh, he got his $10,000 advance three weeks ago and still hasn't gotten his, his idol. Yeah, they're all saying it's a little bit better. Martha, do you know if the essential employees will be getting the $450 a week bonus for working through the pandemic? Uh, we haven't heard if it is, oh, Amber hasn't gotten hers yet. Sorry, Amber. Um, 
I don't know that that's been approved yet. Do you, Tom? I don't think it has been. I hadn't heard that it had been approved. What Lots was the name of the app? Do you remember the name of it? I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. If you remember the name of the act, Martha, let us know. Is the thinking that uh, cleaning professionals would be considered essential employees? Uh, could be uh, that the ISSA was definitely pushing that way. Maybe not residential so much, but could be. Ah, Rosemary, waiting for the deposit. Yep, uh, but you got approved, yay. Uh, glad to hear that. I know uh, a lot of conversation going around again with people. You know, the the later you get it, it's another one of those things. Unless you absolutely need it right now, it's the the timing of it is not not that big of a deal, right? The longer it goes, the longer until you have to pay anything. Talking to a guy today, he's like, for a hundred bucks, I can hold on to you know 150 grand depending on when you got your money, right? A lot of people got 150,000. For 100 bucks, you can hold on to $150,000, keep it in your account for a year, see how things are playing out. And if if you don't need it, kick it on back. But either way, you got that nice, what did he call it? Golden umbrella. I'm like, ah, oh, that's a nice little term. Uh, got an email from SBA about the idol today. Have been afraid to open it. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. I love it. Huh, Bridget, open it. Don't keep us in suspense. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Open it and tell us, what, tell us what it says before our Facebook Live is over. Yeah, come on. So I am, um, you and I are not, are not uh, buddies in this way because I would have that thing open so freaking fast. <laughs> I would not. I would not be able to sit with it. No matter what else was in the email, that would be the first thing open. My husband, my children, my grandchildren. Sorry, got to check on that idol. Uh, uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. You're crazy, girl. It's crazy. Diane is watching. What are you watching, Diane? Do you know what she's talking about, Tom? Watching us, maybe? Watching us? She's watching, waiting to see what uh, Bridget's uh, idle loan amount is. <laughs> or if you're even getting it, right? So, I I did hear, oh no, sorry, we already talked about that, about the idle maybe increasing monies again. And we did talk about that they opened it back up for non-agriculture. Oh, she's watching us. Sorry, uh, we're not as entertaining as we have been. Oh, so Leslie's like me, right? She pulled her car over to read it. Yes. <laughs> We're the same. <laughs> Absolutely. I would totally be pulling my car over to read it too. What do you what am I getting from the SBA? I'm reading that now. Okay, but okay. Good job, Bridget. <laughs> Don't leave us all in suspense. Okay, but on the flip side, Leslie, I um I, I pulled it over to read it. Yes, I'm reading every single thing about it. But then when I finally got it, it was time to sign the papers. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sign everything. Give me my money. I didn't read any of that stuff. All right. What? Let's see. What does Marlo have here? An email today from SBA too. But it just said, we have received multiple applications from your business for, for the idol. Your earliest application will continue to be processed and we have a withdrawn application number. Okay. Well, that just means you applied multiple places. Good. That's awesome. And they, and they kept your earlier one. That's good. I haven't heard anybody get that email today, which is great. Capital One 360 is offering a good savings percent rate and a $500 new account incentive. Oh, well, that's smart, right? Yeah, all right. They're going to take advantage of people getting this money. Okay, Bridget, uh, I guess we've logged in. Loan um, portal. Finally. Yay. Good job. Aren't you glad you opened it now, Bridget? Yeah, yeah. See? Now you're and gonna click on the link and give it a path forward and yeah. get the ball rolling. You're sleeping better tonight now, girl. Um oh she had to apply twice because it crashed. They got both apps. Yep. Awesome. Yay, Bridget. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I know it feels so good to finally get it. Yeah. Anybody else have anything else going on? 
Anything new? Everybody's kind of a slow start to the week, right? <laughs> you remember last week we, we shared a blog article from a, a guy, Aaron somebody. He was a Dartmouth yeah. professor and it was explaining kind of the latest thinking in terms of how the virus spreads. Yeah. I uh, read an article this weekend that was in a Salt Lake City newspaper and it, it's kind of long. So what I am going to do is I'm going to paste the link here before I start. So I don't forget. Okay. Um, I'll like to put the link to this in the resource page for, for, for cleaning business today. Already got that taken care of. But this okay. is a really awesome article. There's places that we may, you know, frequent or, you know, in our, our day to day lives and some of the statistics in terms of what we know and how. Um, the disease can be spread and at the end of each section it kind of gives us a, a thumbnail of what to think about and some of it maybe is, is common sense but it's good to have that common sense backed up with numbers mm -hmm. you know, bars and clubs for instance that dance floor floors are probably incompatible with social distancing <laughs> um you know high capacity bars and clubs are going to be uh you know, locations of super spreading events. And a lot of what they talk about here is the spread's going to happen. What they're really trying to do is, I am sorry. What just happened there? Go away. Uh, stay away from these super spreader events. Yeah. Um, buffets, okay. for example. Um, I saw today Golden Corral closed all of their company owned stores. I forget how many of them there were, but it was a material amount. There's still a number of franchises out there and they're kind of, you know, trying to hang on, uh, doing delivery and stuff like that. But, you know, that's hard. It's kind of hard to imagine how buffet is, is gonna, gonna come back. This so is we have a buffet and I can tell you how they're working our buffet um here locally um it's the most popular buffet you've never heard of it oh you have come it's izzy's i think when you guys came here we ate there mm -hmm. um all right so what they do now is um for the buffet they have a it's very old-fashioned it's kind of fun they have like a little sheet of paper and very old-fashioned like i said and um it has everything that they have listed on it and you just write on there a small, medium, or large, like S, M, or L. Like, do you want a little bit, a medium amount, or a lot of this thing? And they'll bring you a plate with that. So you're like, I want a small amount of green beans. I want a large amount of potatoes. I want a medium amount of gravy. And then they, when you're ready, you put it on this little thing. And they come and take it away. And they fill your plate. And they bring it to you. So you still get the buffet experience, but somebody else is bringing it to you. So I love it because I can get even fatter now because I don't even have to get the small you know, amount of exercise. Yeah. <laughs> do they need right. more employees to do that? Um, I'm sure they do. Yeah, I'm sure they do. It makes sense that they would. But this is an amazing, must be an amazing place to work because as long as I've been going there, they have had the same employees working there. I'm sure they have other employees too, but right now I can picture uh, four employees from that place that have been there at least 10 years that are not family, not family members. So it's a pretty good place to work. I'm uh, just trying to hire two people. People aren't showing up for interviews. Yeah, we hear that a lot. Anyway, Tom, I, I cut cut you off. Is this your buffet thing here or what no, was this? No, this isn't a buffet. This is a bus. This is a bus and uh China. 66 passengers uh, were on a bus. They were, were going to uh, a worship service and they had a 50 mile, a 50 minute ride each way. And they were sitting in the same seats going and coming. Out of 66 people, 24 became infected. Uh, wow. They showed the seating arrangement. One of the things of, of, of interest here, you see over here on the Right here, where it says IP, this was the infected person. Okay. 
with the exception of the person sitting right next to the infected person, everybody else against this side over here with the window and the, air, the circulation of the air was like blowing up and over. None of those other people got sick, but the intake was over here on this side. You see, everybody over there got sick. Yeah. So not everybody, but, but a larger number. A good so, number. You know, seating position matters, airflow matters, and they kind of get into what, what are the What are the NCs, Tom? Uh, no, uh, no one got sick that was sitting in that seat. But but there was somebody sitting there? Yeah, and here's like a seat that was empty where nobody was in it. Oh, the gray, okay. I was looking for, where are the empty seats? No, no case. Uh, they had, apparently they only had one empty seat. Okay. A couple of people wow. asymptomatic. And these numbers here in blue are the number of people that these people infected. Like, this person oh, here got sick and four made people. four other people sick. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of them that have zero, though. That's interesting. They just got sick and didn't make anybody else sick, as far as they know, as yeah. far as the Maple tries. Well, this is awesome. I really love this link. Where'd you find this little gem? Oh, uh, just scarring. Okay. This was a uh, okay. uh, Salt Lake City newspaper. But this, wow. is, this is an awesome, this is an awesome article, I think, because, um, if you're riding a bus, something to think about. Um, choir. Do they We've even have us? Singing significantly raises the likelihood of transmission. The idea of getting together and close, just the, the amount of uh, viral shed when, when people are singing seems to be really high. Because you're really expelling that stuff. Yeah, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be. That I see what you mean about um, common sense, but a lot of times it's helpful to see that. There's study with the church and super spreading yeah, yeah. events are happening in churches. Singing in buffets, I guess, are things that oftentimes happen in churches, and both of those are... are problematic. Oh, I thought you said singing in buffets. I was like, no, well, singing, in, in well, singing, buffet? singing in the buffet is like a double whammy. Can't do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, I got you. <laughs> Family gatherings, you know, hugging and sharing foods, probably not cool. Yeah. Grocery stores. Wow. Constant movement in a spacious building helps prevent exposure to coronavirus droplet twits matches the the study that we we saw last week from the dartmouth professor it's like if you go to a grocery store i mean you still want to take proper precautions well you know wash your hands and hopefully everybody's wearing a face mask but just passing somebody in the, aisle of the grocery store doesn't seem to to be problematic gyms here's some studies and a zumba class out of the of I think this is one where the uh, instructors are getting sick. Gym because they're, they're there longer. They're yeah. in the area. That makes sense. High intense workouts may be more dangerous than low intense workouts. Makes sense because you're breathing more in. Sucking it in. Here's a mall. Uh, this was uh, in China. Yeah like seven stories and this person here was infected, infected people on this timeline days here. And these up here were people that these people got infected and then it spread to other floors and. Weird. High traffic numbers, one mall or large store can infect many people, even though the likelihood of any individual customer being infected is low. Good to know. Offices, we saw this study uh, last week. This was uh, the Dartmouth professor had that same so study. There. Yeah. You know, spending a long time near an infected person is, you know, not a good thing. Restrooms, we saw that. 
um, in a study from, from, from China, it was actually a, a COVID ward that hallway transmission and just be out in open areas didn't seem to, to be that big a deal, but enclosed shared like bathroom facilities that, you know, people are going in and out of seem to, to, to have a much higher incidence of spread. Short amount of time, like an elevator ride, doesn't seem to be as dangerous. Again, the, the Dartmouth professor thing, if you needed a thousand units of, you know, shed RNA virus, if you will, it's just a matter, you know, it's a matter of concentration and time. And if the amount of time exposure is short, Here's a study in an airplane where we had an infected person, the other people that got sick. Don't go in an airplane with a cough. Need to wear a mask. If there is some of the cough, those viral particles can likely travel more than six feet, but not throughout the airplane. The, out, the odds of an outbreak wow. on an individual plane are deemed to be low. Wow. That is not what I would be thinking at all. That's one that doesn't doesn't fit with my, you know, um, just my common sense thing. I would think that small area, long period of time, you know, three, four, five hours. Talking about polling places, in-person voting either has a small or neutral impact on spread when precautions are taken. Schools. Schools are significant source of spread for other diseases like the flu, but so far not the coronavirus. We don't know why. Yeah. You don't want it because it's an unprecedented. Ah, <laughs> finally. Good job, Tom. Good job. Yeah, almost like I that would get away. Oh, um, we got some questions over here. I was so um, in, involved in what you were doing. Let me see what I got over here. I'm just trying to hire two people. Yep, Sterling. Keep at it. Keep going, hit it hard, hit it hard. Uh, I know a lot of people are having really good luck on Indeed right now. So I don't know where you're looking, but check out Indeed. Uh, and remember, even if you've tried someplace in the past and it hasn't worked, always circle around and try again because you never know when that's going to change. Uh, Charles, do you all still offer the foundations to success mastermind groups? Uh, yes, we do offer foundations. Um, how that works um, with the mastermind groups, though, is when you sign up for foundations, you're automatically placed into the mastermind accountability groups. Uh, you get free admission for six months in, in the MMA groups. Leslie, this is also a great article. Ooh, Tom, you're going to like this one. Another one from Aaron Bromage. Um, the risks, know them, avoid them. So, yeah. Yeah, that is <laughs> Leslie, she's. Leslie's on fire today. The reason why they're not getting a lot of spread in schools, because they're closed. <laughs> funny. You're funny. <laughs> um, Rosemary, let's go to Nashville. I don't I don't understand the reference. What's going on in Nashville? That must be a news thing. You don't know, Tom? I have no idea. Yeah, no idea. Leslie, fill us in. Is that something that's going on? And Starlene, you're using Indeed. We have also been having really good luck with Facebook, where in the past we didn't necessarily have that great of luck with Facebook. It was kind of hit or miss. Um, but lately, really good luck with Facebook. So maybe check that out. Oh, this is that restaurant one. Yeah, this, is, like this is the one that we posted the other week. Yeah, I remember. This is the one that I was like, are you sure it's a guy, Tom? That spelling is usually a girl spelling. Yeah. But nope. Then we decided that wasn't. Mm, Politically mm -hmm. correct to yeah. even talk about the gender. Yep. Yep. That happened and then I'm bringing it up again. Yay me. I love it when I do that. It's so awesome. Ah. <laughs> uh, all right, how are you guys doing with your testing? Passing out tests? I will check Facebook out, thank you, yeah. Um, and what we did with Facebook, the thing that made the difference, Darlene, is 
have them, don't make them leave Facebook to give you their application. Um, instead, um, have them um, apply right within Facebook. And then if you want to um, engage with them, accept their application, then after that, then kick them over to whatever, you know, like we use People Matter. So if you want to kick them over to a platform, don't make them go there too soon. First, engage with them through Facebook. That is what's really helped us a lot. Um, oh yeah, good. Um, Bridget, how can we get in another MMA group? Are we eligible if we did the short foundations this past summer? Yes, Bridget, you are. Um, I sent, I thought you were on my list of people that I sent uh, a messenger to. Uh, maybe not. Actually, it doesn't matter. I will. Oh, no, you're not. Okay. I will send you some info, Bridget. Um, yeah, you just got to fill in a short little application. It's not hard. It's easy. Um, let's see. One of my students is not able to open session three. The rest have gotten it. Is there something going on? Any ideas there, Tom? I, if everybody else has been able to get to it at some one person, I don't know. Was that person able to get to sessions one and two? If you want to take their login information and put it in an email and send it to mail at moderncleaning.com. We can take a look on our end. Linda, you didn't get um, your MMA info? You are on my list. Shannon Hazen, Linda, and Amelia. You guys all should have gotten um, Facebook Messenger with a little application, short little application. I will send it out again, Linda, when I send it with Bridget. I'll get it out for you. Um, okay. Anything else going on? Okay. Are we going to get out of here early? Oh, you didn't pull up cleaning business today, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Cleaning business today. Where you go? Anybody that's not a member? The website. And she did website. get... She did get session one and two, Tom. Linda is saying, ha, just have her try again. Yeah, I, I, that should, she, sh, if her, she should, now, yeah, that should work. Have her try it again, maybe. I don't know. If she tries it again, it doesn't work, let us know. Yeah, I, yeah, I will add you, Rosemary. Um, yeah, I'm glad that you um, are liking the training, Leslie. I knew you had Beatrice, too. I, I am going to be shocked if anybody says that they're not. Uh, another thing I'm really liking about this course, we kind of went back and forth a little bit, is we have multiple people that are presenting, right? There is um, Matt Ricketts and um, Janice, obviously, it's, it's mainly her material, Janice Stewart, and Joe Walsh, and then uh, me, I, I'm also presenting. And I think it's kind of cool to break it up this way, uh, because when it's just one presenter, it can, it can feel long. Um, even with four presenters, <laughs> it's really long. It's seven classes, eight hours. Is that right, Tom? It's about eight hours, right? Well, the time, you know, but it's broken down. Classes are broken down into multiple modules as well. And how many modules just depends on the class. So you don't have to grind through it all at one time. You can do it in, in, in bite-sized pieces when it's convenient. But still, it's a lot. It's eight hours. So, I mean, it's a lot of information. Oh, Carol, I got you. I'm adding you to the MMA list. I'll get that out. When I get off this call, you guys, I'll, I'll send that over. But it's a lot of information. I mean, <laughs> as we're building these things, our biggest problem has been um, trying to get them down to a manageable uh, uh, amount. I mean, there's so much information. It's crazy. Leslie, I wish I could buy in bulk and have them for a year. Breaking it up is great. We're going to have an option like that soon, aren't we, Tom, where they could buy and maybe have access 
for the course we're, of the year. New platform up and running. We're 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 working hard on that, and a big part of getting the 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 new platform up is transitioning over from the old platform because we've got so many people that have signed up for the COVID class as well as uh, PHC that we need to get all their login information over and not only just get it moved over, but get them organized by company. So every company will have an administrator that can go in and then manage their, their people. So we're, I guess, working really hard to get all that straightened out and you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be there sometime later this week. And we're going to have a, a, a period of time when we're not going to be signing up anybody or not actually putting people in classes on the, on the old platform so we can get everybody moved over to the new platform and then we'll, we'll push them over to the new platform. Hopefully we can do that in like a day. But the new platform. So don't worry. Don't yeah. worry, Leslie, that that's all going to play out to your advantage. I promise. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be good. We're going to take yeah. care of everybody who, who, who signed up. Mm. It's going to be good. Oh, Martha, I got your name on my list. I got you. I'll send you in with everybody else. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Isn't that going to be awesome to know, especially because so many classes, seven classes. How are you going to keep track? Especially like you, what do you have, like 30 employees? I mean, how, how are you going to keep track of who's done it, who hasn't, who's gone through, what what stage they're in. I think this is going to be amazing having one administrator be able to track everybody's progress. Also, you'll be able to see where they are with the knowledge checks, right, Tom? Yep. I mean, I feel like it's going to be really, I'm just super excited about it. I think it's going to be really, really, really good. It's a whole brand new level of, of training for people. And you know what else I really like? So you guys, Anybody that's taking this program, it's, it's going to be really easy to see. It's going to take you like all of like the first 15 minutes. You're going to be able to see that this is kind of a light version of the HCT program. It's just more directly relatable for your professional house cleaners. Okay. So it's not going to be a surprise. But what is really going to be nice is that we can have this ongoing training. It was so hard with the HCT program. Don't get me wrong. Love the HCT program, right? Sent all my people through it. So don't get me wrong. But I love this ongoing, the, uh, the uh, ability to be able to have ongoing. I, oh, I love that, that piece. Yeah, right, Leslie? So important. I love that. Anyway, oh, I just realized, Tom, straight up, three o'clock. <laughs> I get talking. Any business today, if you haven't subscribed right here, just real simple email, first name, last name. If you haven't subscribed, please do. You'll get on our mailing list. Stay up with all the late breaking stuff. Every time we, we add content, we'll send out uh, a newsletter at least every other week. Recently, it's been more recent than that. But it, our super secret link here for smart business uh, moves participants, if you do uh, forward slash coronavirus dash downloads, Get off of my computer. <laughs> Molly. <laughs> uh, um, here we go. And the article that I was showing you today is right here. The last one, coronavirus spreads uh, in those everyday places. The one that uh, Leslie was sharing with us is up here. Some of the risks know them. They're in uh, Bromish blog. He's really good. He's got other uh, posts on there as well that are worth uh, the visit. If you are interested in PHC, it's uh, basically go to moderncleaning.com. We got we got both programs. I mean, people are still signing up for the, for the COVID class, and if they haven't, you got people out there cleaning homes. Uh, this COVID class is a three hour class on just the stuff that uh, they really ought to know about uh, COVID to to keep them safe and your clients safe. The PHC program is over here on the right, and you go down here to uh, to sign up. Aww, like Dad, get off. <laughs> 
Stop playing on the computer. Play with me. She was asleep. Aww. I, I can almost smell her puppy breath. They do. <laughs> they do. How that works. I forgot what that smelled like. Yep. I can almost smell it. It's good enough smell. I remember it now. Uh, oh, look at Carol said that she saw the benefit of having two employees watch a classes together in our office on a TV screen. They collaborate and stay more attentive. I can see that being true. How did you deal with the um, bu -bu 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 certificate issue? Did you did you just not worry about that at all, Carol? Just I'm just curious um, because the certificate is the least important part of the whole thing, right? So that's why I'm like, I was just curious. I can understand it. It was not an issue at all. Hey, okay, Tom, it's been an hour. Okay, guys, thank you. Um, more information coming tomorrow. It looks like uh, our uh, federal lawmakers are making some things happen. We'll try to get some more information on the latest and greatest of where uh, PPP is going. And uh, anything else that happens in the next 24 hours, we'll see you tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern. You guys uh, have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. -bye. Bye,